Um, Alan Michael Grabelny, AM for short. This is introduce yourself. I'm Nikki. Nice to nice to talk to you all, you guys. We're both developer uh, evangelists here at AWS, and we're going to walk you through over the next what six weeks, seven weeks, six weeks. Yeah, uh, we're going to walk you through building a modern application, right? And all that entails. We're going to go through all the buzzwords, everything that. You might have questions about, uh, we'll try and answer as, as best to our abilities. And just to give you some idea about our abilities, um, I, uh, I started my career actually as an elementary school teacher, so I'm already not winning you over by that. <laughs> but I, 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 went back to, uh, I went back to school uh, after transitioning over to technical writing for some software companies uh, and got a CS degree. I, I got this crazy idea in my head that Anybody can code, right? I just I don't I don't know who put that there, but I believe it. Yeah, I do, I do too. And uh, so I went and got a CS degree. I got my first software engineering job. Uh, after that, I moved over. I kind of realized that I also like to flex my communication skill muscle too, right? So I moved into first a ProServe job where. We delivered projects that customers gave us, and I would be able to interact directly with the customer. Then I moved over to solution architecting, and that was more around talking about the possibilities, what people could build, and go out and sit with a group of developers for you know a couple days. And now you're an evangelist. Now I'm an evangelist, and I'm still trying to figure out what that exactly means. I don't know that anybody has defined it very well uh, ever, but. I'm excited at the possibility of just getting to teach people new things, listen to uh, what they're struggling with. Tell us, tell us about you. I'm more, more interested in you. So I have uh, been a software developer for five years now. Started my career as a uh, full stack developer in .NET, actually, which is one of the frameworks that we're going to be working with on this show. And then I uh, ran my own company for two years. Uh, I ran a VC-funded startup before coming to AWS, and now I'm an evangelist. Um, I, the way I would define it is I people pay me to uh, basically play with cool things and then show other people how cool they are. Like, that's that's my definition. You're a lot better at it than I am. That's, yeah, that's great. That's the definition. You already know I, I just doing. still I just still can't believe that they pay me to just play with cool things that I'm like, <sighs> That you would have played with anyway. Totally. totally. They didn't figure that out, that you would have done it no, without they, getting paid. They have not <laughs> discovered that they're paying me for something that has fun to me. You already would have done it. Yep. You Basically. probably shouldn't have said that, because now they might not pay you anymore. Don't tell anyone. Okay, sorry, sorry. What happens on this show stays on this hey, show. Well, no, that's not how it works. This is broadcast live to oh, anybody who wants crap. to watch it, actually. So. Anyways. Uh, and um, I, I, I don't have Twitch pulled up right now. I can't see uh, the questions coming in but or, or the people. I assume there are thousands already in here watching. So. Well, let's just hope that, that my boss isn't watching. Maybe hundreds of thousands, actually. I think we... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, so, what are we going to be talking about? What are we going to be building? Give yeah, us a rundown. Why are we here? We are going to be building a modern web application over the next six episodes. You are going to learn about all the things that you maybe have been afraid to ask about, uh, like serverless, containers, microservices, all the buzzwords, every single one. Um, yeah. Container orchestration. Front end dev. Front end development. Uh, with Angular. Actually, that's what we're talking about today. Yeah. The topic of today. Spoiler, sorry. <laughs> CI/CD pipeline too. That's that's another one that is, is. So who should watch this show? I think anybody. That's who I'm targeting. You know, that's the same. Uh, it would be the same audience. I think anybody that is brand new to development or uh, either a developer and new to AWS. Sure. Uh, we will define concepts uh, in a very simple way and make it really easy for you to understand. So. Anybody that wants to watch is uh, free, to, free to do so. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think if you're more of an experienced developer, you might find some of the concepts that we go over a little repeat or that you already know. Just tune us out. Put us in the background. Yeah, sure. But also, you may learn some things that we, you know, we may go in depth about a tool that you haven't used before, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, just we may hit some topics that you. Just haven't looked at in a while. You only maybe scratch the surface, refresher. maybe. But this should be perfect for a beginner, right? Absolutely. Beginner to development, beginner to AWS. Um, 
those are those are who we who we'd like to follow along with us. And how can they follow along? Well, we've got an entire tutorial that you and I wrote. Yeah, we wrote. Um, we have. We didn't write the Python version of it, actually. Um, we've currently got up right now Python version and the one that you and I wrote together, uh, the .NET version. And then there are other languages coming if uh, neither one of those uh, floats your boat. So right. we have and Go and Java. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but if you just head over to aws.amazon.com slash developer, right, that'll, that'll bring you to the kickoff point where uh, we'll be talking about this mythical monsters or misfits. Sorry, mythical I already misfits. I already screwed it up. <laughs> mythical mi mythical misfits. Uh, you just want to call them mythical monsters. Well, because they are monsters. Yeah, right? they are. They kind of look like monsters. Well, they are. They're they're based on some of my favorite cryptid animals. Actually, <laughs> I I mean I didn't make any of these characters. I can't claim that. But uh, do you know cryptozoological animals? No. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I'm I'm big into this kind of stuff. Of course you are. Yeah. I totally am. But it, it's like Bigfoot. Like Bigfoot's a cryptid, which I Well, I like some of them. I really I really yeah, like the do. troll. He's evil. Just just to call him out, you'll you'll see him in uh, probably in the in this episode somewhere at some point. Oh, he's actually if you're uh, once we once we show you everything, you'll see him on that page that yeah, Sam just called out. He's in the corner and he's like, Let's build right. holding his little like what is it? Something? Fire thing? A torch. <laughs> torch. <laughs> the torch is the word that you're... That's <laughs> the word I was looking for. Okay. Holding the torch. So... Uh, we also have a GitHub repo. We do have a GitHub repo. Yeah. I was just about to mention it. We'll clone down once we get into the actual coding portion. Uh, if you're following along with us in our language of choice, which is .NET, you just want to clone the branch that's called .NET. I'll show you how to do that, too. So don't worry about having to know how to use Git yet. Um, walk you through how you actually pull down so we, we encourage you guys to participate, speak up, ask questions, tell us what you like and don't like during the episode. Uh, don't be afraid. Um, we will be watching the chat moderation to make sure that your questions are getting answered. Yeah, absolutely. So today, what are we going to do? We are going to deploy the Angular front end that you built for the Mythical Misfits app to S3 as a static website. OK, cool. That's great. Um, so there are kind of maybe, what, three concepts that we're going to cover Three today? concepts. OK. Um, I would say the first concept is front-end development. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And what is, in today's world, what, is, what constitutes front-end development? What are some of the trends? Right, we'll talk JavaScript about JavaScript frameworks. There's like a new one every other day. <laughs> uh, next. So great, we are going to build an application, but we want people to be able to use our application. Right, right? so now we need to deploy it. We've got to host it somewhere, right? And so it's just it just so happens to coincide. It's, it's kismet. I have no idea how this <laughs> got put together. It's amazing. We have a service at AWS. We do, of course we do. That will allow you to host a website. Uh, it's like we planned it or something. What's it called? It's called S3. Oh, um, God, what a creative name. We'll find out more about what S3 is uh, and what you can do. So we're, we're, we're figuring out how to host your application, right? At least the parts that we want our users to interact directly with. And then the third concept is, well, how do we deploy it, right? What if we right. make changes to our front end application? We need to redeploy. We need to redeploy it. How do we make that easy to make sure that we are mostly focusing on the code and just, you know, one command to deploy it. Do we have any tools that are going to help us there? Oh, we, Probably we, not, right? No, definitely not. No Absolutely tools. not. That's no, too we, bad. We wouldn't know about those tools. It would have been really nice to have some tools, I think. It would be. Oh, we do. Oh, we're going to use, uh, we're going to use, well, we'll give you the option, but since we are talking .NET, we'll probably err more on the side of PowerShell, which is a pretty common .NET uh, development tool. We do. We will give you the option to use the AWS CLI, though, if that's your preference. Right. Um, I'm actually, as you may be able to tell, I'm sitting on a, a, a Mac machine, right? So I have Bash scripting. You can actually use PowerShell on Mac now, too. They have PowerShell Core. PowerShell Core. So that'll be another tool that we investigate on that third concept of deploying yep. to S3. Uh, and then we might even get a little bonus, depending on how much time we take to do that, to look at a, another library that AWS has come out with called uh, Amplify. And Amplify it's also is another CLI tool that will help you. My point is, we've got options, right? <laughs> we, do, we definitely have options. We've got options. a lot of options. <laughs> with AWS, you will, you'll never want for options, no. that's for sure. So I think that it would be really fun to play a game 
to help uh, the viewers get to know us a little bit better because um, this is uh, this is our first time streaming on Twitch together. Yeah, this is uh, yeah. This I, is it. I was on Twitch uh, for one of the AWS summits, but this is this is same. Generally, the first uh, first time I've I've been on a show for Twitch. Do so you want to play a game? I guess if I have to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, of course I want to play. A game. Always forcing you to play games with me. I know. Um, what are we gonna play? We're gonna play two truths and a lie. Two truths and a lie. How does? Wh what are the rules? The, the rules are exactly in the name. You tell me. <laughs> the rules are the name. <laughs> you tell me two true things about yourself and one lie. And then at the very end of this episode, we have to guess each other's lie. Okay, I think the, the Twitch sphere should oh, guess. Oh, well, too, you, right? you guys should totally take a stab at guessing which one of us, uh, which one of our three is a lie. But they have to stick around. Till the end. We won't, we won't get this until the end after we deploy the site. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll play. Yeah. Yeah, I've decided right. I'll play. In this exact moment, I decided it. <laughs> I'm glad I convinced you. Yeah, that was good, convincing. All right. You want me to go first? Oh, yeah. You're totally going first. Okay. Um, two truths and a lie. I'm what not ready I yet. I have to prepare mine. All lies. That's what I'm going to do. Um, so, let's see. I went to the same college as professional <coughs> WWF or WCW, I can't remember which one, uh, wrestler, The Undertaker. Oh, I'm so screwed. <laughs> I don't know what college you went to. <laughs> went to the same college as, as The Undertaker. <sighs> okay. Okay. Next. Uh, number two, I do a pretty okay impression of Owen Wilson. I can do Owen. Okay, if that's the truth, you have to do that at the end. Okay, okay. If it's the truth. If it's the truth. If it's the truth. Uh, three, I once, when I was a kid, broke my arm and didn't tell my mom about it for two whole days. What? <laughs> How old were you? <laughs> uh, I was four or five, I can't remember, maybe four. Was it I like, tried to hide uh, it. Was it like actually. obvious? What okay, do you, think? you know what? I, 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 had, I had a cast. I had to get a cast. <clears throat> I, uh, That's skill. But it, two days, I, I kind of just drag it around because <laughs> I didn't want to go to the doctor. And now, as an adult man, I don't ever go to the doctor. So one day I'll just die. I don't either. And my, my wife will. <laughs> Who likes be going really to sad. the doctor? Absolutely not. Avoid at all costs. Okay, my turn. Okay, so let's see. I'm a shoe artist. Okay, all right. I love painting on shoes. Or um, I thought maybe you love painting shoes. Like, oh, you only paint shoes. You paint pictures and they're only shoes. No. No, okay, you paint on shoes. That's correct. All right. What, so what would you define that? I'm an artist that paints on shoes? Oh, no, I know, I just, I had Did to I ask clarifying okay, questions. Clarifying it's always question. a good, that's, that's, that's a good best practice when you're working on software. <laughs> always ask clarifying questions about what you're building. Okay, next. Um, I used to manage celebrity money. Okay, all right. And um, I have waited in line for every single iPhone launch since 2007. Nerd alert. Including this last one? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, okay. Of course, I, I couldn't miss it. I know your lie. I've already figured it out. <laughs> I've already, I've used my Sherlock-like <laughs> deduction abilities to Oh, God. Well, you don't know where I was last Friday. Or no? It's, well, uh, that doesn't uh, uh, Betraying <laughs> yourself with your lies. Okay, Dang cool. It. Okay, we're moving on. So, put your guesses <laughs> in the chat. Uh, we'll see who's right and who's wrong and who wins. I already know who's going to win. It's right here. God, so, so we'll cocky. <laughs> um, what's next? <clears throat> what, what? Let's dive in. Oh, Shall we? Okay, you know, we started, actually do the yeah. thing that we were going to do, which is get into the I thought world. we were just going to play games. Well, I thought you invited me here to play games. That's right. I forgot about that. Well, what I forgot to tell you is that actually I need you to live code. That was one of the lies you right told, now. I guess. <laughs> okay, cool. I guess I'll code, sure. All right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about Angular today, right? That's you funny. are. He's he's an Angular guy. I'm, I'm more of a React kid, so Angular is going to be AM's expertise. If you have questions specific to the front end code, Questions about us three, I can answer those all day. That's a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Uh, so what is Angular? What's React? You just said another word. I did say another word. What's okay, React? so if you're not familiar, these are JavaScript frameworks. Um, 
You've probably heard a bunch of them. There's View, there's Knockout, there's Ember, yeah. there's Backbone. There's a ton of them. Um, there, as I said before, there's a new one almost every day. And what do you build with them? So you can build uh, front end applications, single page applications. And uh, so if we can In show JavaScript. my screen here, uh, let's, let's take a look at one that we built. Yeah, let's okay. take it the let's take a look at the Angular app that you built. Cool. Uh, this actually isn't the Angular app that I built because it's uh, from the original the original tutorial in Python, um, which is using Angular one. But this is what we're going to build, right? Over yes. the next six, six or seven weeks or however long. This is it. This is the site mythicalmisfits.com. Yeah. And what is a mythical misfit? There's my guy. There they are. <laughs> wow. Rujin. Okay. That's my favorite. Did you ask him if that's how you pronounce it? No. Oh, you should have asked him. He, he hasn't talked to me yet. Okay, well. Uh, and you do things gonna, like interact, gonna... right, with the page. Um, I just, I want the torch. I want to call out here, this, this URL is not changing, right? Yeah. It's kind of strange, isn't it? Things are dynamically loading. That's crazy. I'm, I'm touching and changing Insane, and doing things. Insane, right? If anybody used the internet a long time ago, the page had to reload every time uh, new data was coming to Even the page. Even when I go to log in. Amazing. Modal. Okay. Beautiful modal. That's a modal, by the way, if you didn't know. A modal? Yeah. Okay. Was a modal with you? <laughs> no, you shouldn't laugh that much at that. That was dumb. Uh, anyway, so this is what we're going to build, right? This, this. Uh, I will always laugh at puns. Mythical Misfits. That was a really lazy pun. Uh, this Mythical Misfits page, uh, and again, we, we mentioned earlier, if you go to slash developer after AWS dot uh, Amazon.com. This tutorial on the website, the URL that he just gave you, is going to directly refer to the Python tutorial. But again, if you're following us in .NET, um, you might want to go to that GitHub branch because our readmes uh, will provide our directions to do some of the same things, but in .NET. Right. And so we've built our front end with, with a JavaScript framework that we'll talk more we about <laughs> as we get deeper into the episode and actually start looking at code. But what other things did we use? You mentioned, I mean, I'm pretty sure you mentioned every word that you could put into the title of a session at on a conference, and you would immediately get accepted to. Uh, oh, talk. you mean earlier? Yeah, you know, earlier. Uh, microservices, you, all the buzzwords. Oh, there we go. There's See, one. Oh, just, I, I, I want to give you a talk at a conference just when I hear <laughs> you say it. Um, so what is, Please. Let's, let's talk about over the next couple weeks, what we're going to build. Let's do it. Um, and some of the concepts behind what we're building. So beyond this front application, front end application, um, we are going to build um, a, we're going to have a, a back end. So it'll be in .NET. And then we'll have uh, a data tier. Um, our data tier will be hosted by DynamoDB. If you've never heard of DynamoDB, it is our NoSQL uh, database solution at AWS. Um, there are other offerings that also provide NoSQL databases like MongoDB, if you've heard of them, or. You mentioned a back end. What does that have to do with microservices? So what is a microservice? A microservice, well, a really good microservice only does one thing and does it really well. Uh, the, the Linux principle. That's, that's the Linux principle. Um, so if you, if you are familiar with building a web application for the first time at all, then you maybe have built uh, one application that does like a bunch of different things. So if you think about like a, like a shopping website, you know, your, your website has a shopping cart and it lets you place orders and it keeps track of your cart and it lets you sign up and log in. And basically all these things that you're um, doing, you're hitting a backend uh, server application where all of the methods are in one application. A microservice would do one thing and do one thing really well. So you might have one microservice that keeps track of your shopping cart. And then you might have one microservice where you can place orders. And so that's the concept of a microservice. Um, how you choose to divide up your services really is up to you or the architect on the, uh, on the job. And uh, what, how, how each microservice is actually built is another architectural decision. Our microservice is built using containers. Yes, containers, another good concept. Let's take a moment, though, just for everybody tuning in. Uh, to, to recap, kinda recap where, we are. where we are. I'm AM, you're I'm Nikki. Uh, we're talking about building a modern application with, with a lot of the modern tools of today's uh, 
stacks, right? We're calling out all those buzzwords. Yeah, we, uh, we already started with microservices. We already talked about front end. Uh, and next, I think we should talk about containers, since you brought it up. Um, also, let's check if we've got any questions so far yet, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Might as well. Let's see if anybody has posted. Um, Q. Q. Oh, Syncs. Hi, Syncs. Do you guys know what laptops they are using? So I'm on a Windows machine, and he is on a Mac. Yeah. Just to clarify, and my stickers being upside down is a new trend that I'm setting. <laughs> just to clarify She's that. She's trying to start that up. It's a new trend. You've yeah. got to put your stickers upside down on your laptop to be a cool kid now. Apparently. Um, I wouldn't. Marshall know. BG, thank you for clarifying that my stickers are flipped. If you want to join my trend, like, please. Let's see. Oh, who I else saw a good one. Uh, why React over Angular? I don't know who asked that. Um, why React over Angular? So we are going to do this in Angular, but. When I said he's an Angular guy and I'm a React kid, I meant like we have a preference with our JavaScript frameworks, as most developers do. Um, <laughs> developers tend to be very opinionated, so we all have our preferences of what we choose to build in. Um, you could obviously build this same exact app in React. We have not done that for you today, but um, it's possible. Yeah, actually, so I chose Angular because I know it, number one. That's, uh, that's I know React. That's probably a uh, the main motivating factor for picking Angular. Number two, uh, I've worked a lot in .NET and with a lot of .NET developers. And I think Angular is typically the one uh, that I see the most in the .NET world, just because Microsoft has thrown a lot of its weight behind Angular as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it uses a superset. That's a, that's a technical word that I love, a superset uh, of JavaScript called TypeScript. And that's a, uh, a technology developed by Microsoft. Strongly typed. It lets you add strongly typed um, objects. Wait, wait, wait! To back up, back code. up. If yeah. you're if you're new to development, what is strongly typed? Strongly typed means that I define out exactly what an object or a class in this case uh, is supposed to look like, right? Yep. The very common thing in JavaScript is that I can add properties. We'll see. We won't see arbitrarily adding properties because we're using TypeScript. But you can in JavaScript. You can just add things on to the objects that you're creating mm -hmm. uh, without having to define it. Um, so what that means why, is. Why would I use strongly typed as a developer? Like, why would I like it? It's opinions. It's all opinions. But why you might like it. Is why I might like it. Let's say you're creating a, a large project. Yeah. Uh, and over time, the more files that you add to the project, the more classes, the more objects, the more services, all these things that are added to a project kind of become unwieldy, right? It's difficult to actually kind of figure out and just at runtime catch errors and things like right. that. What strongly typed languages allow you to do is before you actually even run your code, it can detect errors that other languages like Python or PHP or Ruby may not detect. And JavaScript, regular yep. JavaScript has Absolutely. this too. Uh, you may only encounter the error uh, because you sent in the wrong object to a method uh, without knowing it. And it was expecting a different kind of object. You spin the code up yep. and actually run it. Whereas with languages like C Sharp or Java or TypeScript, you have strongly typed objects and yep. classes and models, right? So you know exactly what you've defined out. The short of that is that you avoid bugs. There we go. <laughs> simply, simply thanks for put, boiling it down. Who for likes me. bugs? No one likes bugs. Uh, bugs have kept me employed for a while. So, <laughs> I so like you to put, like bugs. Here's what I like to do. All right. IntelliSense has decide. also kept you employed yeah, for a while. Yeah, IntelliSense has kept me employed for a long time. This is what I like to do. This is how you optimize, right? So you add yeah. like a thread.sleep to all of your programs. Yeah. Like 30 seconds. So you basically and shut down. And then like down. six months from now, you delete them. Yeah, you call you and you said I improved performance by two hundred percent. It's brilliant. It's not. So that's how you kidding. stay employed. That's a, that's a uh, unethical <laughs> uh, pro tip. Uh, Don't actually do that I was in just real joking. life. It was just a joke. Um, we got another question. Okay. From Hator Lessa, what is your to me? What's your favorite front end framework? So mm. my favorite a long time ago was Knockout, and then I recently became obsessed with React. So I would say it's React. And then a long time ago, it was Knockout. I, I still have a special place in my heart for Knockout, though. Absolutely. Um, 
Knockout was my first my first front end framework, and it was my fave. I'm gonna say something highly controversial. Oh God, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's like my mo. Um, that actually is his mo. Yeah, I love I love doing that. It's fun. All right, uh, let's hear it. I don't think you actually always need a front end framework. I think you can I, still I develop so applications with just plain old JavaScript. Yep, um, or even even if you just used a library like jQuery. Yeah, yeah, J there's nothing wrong with jQuery. There's nothing wrong with jQuery. <laughs> but this is a like medium-sized project, I'd say. I'm probably not even medium, really. But <laughs> it's also for demonstration purpose, so we picked to use a front-end framework here. Which, again, if you're developing something rapidly or something small, not a lot of usage, uh, not going to expand out uh, a whole lot of features, just Valid. regular JavaScript. Um, all right. OK, so no more questions at the moment. So let's cool. get started with Angular. OK, cool. Um, no, actually, we're going to talk about containers real quick. Oh, too. right, containers. Yeah. I missed that. Explain some concepts about the overall project. So we talked about microservices. Uh, we talked about how they key into. Uh, and what a microservice is. Building your backend services for your application. So now that you've built a microservice, what do you run it on? Well, so you have choices, right? Sure. Like, so one of the choices that you could run your microservice on is container. And then a container, if you're not familiar, um, you could think about it like everything is containerized in one. So you have the, uh, the OS, the operating system that the application runs on. You have all the dependencies for the applications installed. So the SDK for um, any software that you're using or dependency. And then you have the application running on top of that. And it's all containerized. So you can run multiple containers on one server instance. And when you do that, you might run one container for each microservice, and then you might replicate those containers to uh, give you more availability. So obviously, you would load scale. balance, scale, right. load balance scale. to those containers. And um, then you would need a way to orchestrate all those containers, because that's a lot of work to well, manage and all also, those containers. Well, and also, containers are going to die. Right. It's a sad story, but. They but are going to die. So containers. Uh, t we typically don't carry state. They're stateless. So I think uh, that, that example that you told me before was, was probably the funniest thing I've ever heard. Ever? The, well, not the funniest ever? thing I've ever heard ever, but no. it was the funniest thing in terms of talking about containers. Is it the pets versus cattle? Or? Yeah, but remember that styrofoam cup one? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. The typical example that people give for containers versus a regular server is I'm, I am a pescatarian. I've been vegan, and vegetarian. Uh, I won't get into any of that. You don't eat meat. He doesn't eat meat. I it's, don't like uh, the example people use because they say containers are like cattle, and servers are like pets. Right? With a server, you name it, you care for it, you love it. You have a funeral when it dies. You know. You're really sad when it dies. Yeah. You. Uh, yeah. With, with containers. Or cattle, the cattle in this example. You expect them to die. You just get another one. You don't bother naming it. Um, I don't like that analogy because it, it makes me think about animals dying. I don't like that. Yeah. So I said, think about your favorite coffee cup or tea cup or whatever, whatever beverage of choice you have. Uh, think about that. So yeah, cup. I would be real sad if my coffee cup, my well, I don't drink coffee, but my matcha tea cup broke. I have a pristine coffee cup from. Like 1987. Night, Jesus. Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, it's of Epcot. And the original branding of Epcot, it's amazing. I love it. If it ever broke, I would, I would just, I don't know what I would do with myself. But if you had a styrofoam that's cup. That's my server. That's like a yeah. traditional server. And right? if you had a styrofoam cup, you but wouldn't care. But if I had just a cup like this, for example. Or a paper cup. Uh, just throw it away. Get another one. Who yep. cares? Who cares? That's how containers are, too. And that's why that's we how have. That's you should feel about your containers, too. Yeah. We have container orchestration layers because of that, right? Because they're, they're constantly going up and down and right. scaling. Right. The orchestration layer will, when one All container right. dies, spin up a new one. Cool. So uh, we'll talk more in depth around that in next week's episode, that's actually. That's right. That's when we build our container service. Today, we got to get into that. Angular world, don't we? We got to get into the front end. We got to host the front end so that it's ready for our future container um, to receive requests from it. Okay, cool. Do you want to? I'm ready to get into some code, show some tools. Let's do it. But 
do you want to recap and check some oh yeah let's so quick? if you're just joining in if you're just tuning in um, my name is Nikki this I'm is AM. AM his real name's Alan Michael but AM for short and uh, today we are showing you how to host a single page application on S3 um, if you're not familiar with S3 it is our simple storage service S3 it's S cubed get it um, three S's simple storage service um, and we're going to be hosting the Angular app on S3 as a static uh, website. And then in future episodes, we will be building out a backend so with containers. We're going to be building a microservice, essentially, and we will have a data layer as well. Yeah, we'll build out... Uh, in a CI CD pipeline, if, those, if yeah, for those of you that deploy. don't know how to create one yet or are interested in, in automating your... Uh, code to delivery we'll, process. We'll build out the back-end <laughs> services that feed in the data to our front-end page. Yep. Allow us to do things like like and adopt <laughs> these these beautiful. Yes. All the functionality that's currently misfits, on mythical mis monsters. mythical <laughs> misfits.com, we will be building out in yes. this series. So if you didn't see it today, you will see it at some point if you keep following in through the next six weeks. Cool. I think we should get started. OK, great. Um, so. I'm displaying here a tool called the Angular CLI. If you if you couldn't tell, I saw it. They, I see they've it. kind of made a big logo here for themselves. Huge. I love it. I like it. In I red love the too. ASCII art. It's in you? red too. Yeah, ASCII no, it's great. great. Um, I I actually at my last job was supposed to, I, I I I did make a CLI tool for the use uh, from our customers and uh, the guy who's working on it with me. One of his main jobs was to make the ASCII art for it, <laughs> and he didn't do it. Yeah, we missed that. So you never had one. No, nope, there still isn't one. Uh, so Angular CLI, you access it with uh, this command called ng, right? And how do I get the Angular CLI if I don't have it installed on my computer yet, right? That's yeah. probably a better question to yeah. start with. Yeah, how do I get it? Uh, well, if you download Node.js, mm -hmm. it comes packaged with what's called NPM, which is the Node Package Manager, right? And this is how you go out to the internet and download things that other people have created, right? Does yeah, we should always take advantage of stuff that people already did for us. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're in an interview, and then you have to rebuild all the algorithms. That's terrible. On the whiteboard, yeah. it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're going to download the Angular CLI. I already have it, but I can download it again uh, with npm install, right? Yeah. So this is how I go out to, uh, we actually go look at npm real quick. Uh, I think it's npmjs.org, right? Yeah. OK. I don't think that's quite right. So let me just Google npm. No, dot com, oh, dot com. Dot com. They got me. They got, they got you. Me. I but think it redirected. redirected. Yeah. Oh, it looks different. I haven't seen this in a while. OK. I cool. was like, I think we're here. That's the logo. Yeah. Um, so uh, Lodash, actually, is one of my favorite uh, JavaScript libraries, right? It's like, to me, it's like link for JavaScript. That's amazing. Um, that's a side note. Teach me about that later. So th these are all libraries, right, that you can download. And yeah. the Angular CLI is packaged that way. If we go to angular.io, um, this is where you go and learn documentation they have one of those cool domains. about Angular. But they also have the Angular CLI, which oh, I didn't want the NPM, actually. I want uh, just cli.angular.io. They subdomained it, right? Uh, this gives you instructions. This is exactly what we're going to do, right? Uh, oh, they, you can't copy and paste that. That's okay. I'll I'll just uh, I'll just write it out. There's probably somewhere on that site where you can copy and paste it. Yeah, and I believe it's slash CLI, right? At Angular slash CLI. So this dash G flag just means install it globally, right? Cool. For all the users on my computer, um, or you can do it locally, which is usually that's contained within one. Package right one right. one uh, node project. That yeah, I was going to say one project. Correct or Angular project, for example. So cool. Now that I have it, I access it with ng, right? Which is a common prefix you see a lot in Angular. Yep. Um, and it gives me a lot of options here. Right? I can add support for something. I can uh, generate something. So what are we using the Angular CLI for? Uh, you use the Angular CLI for almost everything. But well, what are we Angular. using it for? We're going to use it first. I figured, let's just create an Angular project. 
It yeah, has okay, nothing to do with do mythical misfits. And then let's go look at it in terms of what you can use it for in the, the template that we've already built, right? Cool. So if I type ng new and dash dash help, it's going to tell me about this new command. And this is how I generate projects. So I can give it a name. Okay. And that'll go create a file or a folder uh, around my project and put all the files that I need in there. For right? that template. Yep. Super um, cool. So it's like .NET new, if you're familiar with the .NET CLI. That's right. So I'm going to say ng new, uh, Nikki, and Ant. You're way better at naming than me. It's just I'm just going to throw that out there right now. I mean, it is a lot uh, It's more, just like one of your skills? It's more robust than test two. I'm not. I'm not good at naming. Test it's just not my. my it's favorite. not my skill. I used to be really good at naming, and then I became somebody who makes demos, and my names just suck now. Test <laughs> two because test one was already a directory in here. Let's not talk about the okay. directories on my Sorry. computer. So what this did was it created a lot of files for me that Kay. I would have had to create manually, and let's face it, that's I would terrible. Have no never have do done. That. No one has time for that. Uh, but I can actually CD into this, and let me just go ahead and clear the screen a little. Uh, I can CD into this directory that it created for cool. me. Cool. I get ls, right? And so what ls does get is everything get there. all the files that, and folders that it created. These mostly are folders, actually. Uh, the source folder is actually where all of our actual code is. OK. So I can actually just. It's the same thing in React. ls the source file. We have app. That's where all our application files live. OK. We've got something called main.ts, we've got something called, uh, oh, actually, that would be inside app if I ls source and app. Uh, yep, there it is, the app.module.ts. We'll see what all these do and uh, what they're used for. We'll go over it briefly. We're not going to dive yeah. too deep into this stuff, uh, but we'll explain. Brief overview. Yeah, what they're used for and, and how they're uh, Angular, right, and how, how things work in Angular. Uh, but I've got a project here, right? You We're do. We're inside the project. Let's open it up and. Uh, well, I don't even think we need to open it yet. I can actually run it. Okay. Let's I don't see have to do happen. anything. It, it, I don't have to change a file. I don't have to do anything. npm start. How nope. do you start? ng start. ng something. ng. Let's say ng dash dash help and figure it out. ng build. Close. We're getting closer. Duh. ng build is how you would build it for when we deploy oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. I got it. ng serve. I'm so proud yes. of you. So proud of you. Teamwork. ng serve starts up a local server. Okay. All right. And then it assigns it to a port. You can change the port, but it picks 4200. That's just the very Angular port. Specific port. port it is. They, they, I don't know why. They made like a very you specific know my favorite? choice. Uh, you remember Rails? Ruby on Rails? Yeah. Uh, Sinatra was their framework, like their, yeah. their uh, API framework type thing. Uh, they said, their port was five six seven eight. <laughs> it's like Sinatra, like five six, six seven yeah, eight. Yeah, I love it. It's great. great. We just said the same thing at the same time. <laughs> Spend too much time together. So Seriously. If I open this now, this is all we get. It's not it's the template out of the box. It's not going to win any design awards. Um, uh, definitely that not. Maybe the one that I give out because I'm not good at design. Um, so this is it, right? This is yep. where we go. And let's actually now, I'll uh, I'll open another terminal so I can. Open the code and let's go look at the code. Yep, and figure that's out really what I wanted to see. What it's do? I know, I know. You love the code. Um, so if we come in here and look at this, this is the most basic, right? Okay. Uh, we've got this welcome to title, right? And I'll try to do this in the, the least jarring way. So there title has to be defined there we somewhere go. in your welcome to Nikki and Anne. That's the and name where, of the project. where is that being Remember? defined? Yeah. yeah. That's actually being defined. So this is our HTML page. Right. right. So HTML is the markup language used to tell the browser what to show us, right? Yep. Um, we also looks a like a tree. Yeah, it looks like a tree. We also have a CSS file. There's nothing in ours. Obviously, uh, because we won all those design awards. So right. it's CSS like it would is, be empty. What does it do? <laughs> CSS um, gives the page all those fonts and colors and life that you see, all, right. all the design that you see on the web is going to be CSS that's so making that happen. I thought you told me we were going to do this in JavaScript, right? I did. OK, you did. Um, but I got this .ts file. Well, we talked a little bit about TypeScript. So I'm going to guess that TS is TypeScript. Yeah, now. you're right. We got I'm it. just on a roll today, guys. You got it. You don't even develop Angular. I don't even code in Angular. That's great. 
so yeah, dot js. Oh, there's the title. Yeah, That's actually, there's, to find somebody yeah, we somewhere. can actually go in and change that. And what's cool is uh, the ng serve. Will local. automatically yeah, yeah. watches for changes in the file. Auto magically, you do not have to refresh the page. I'm guessing it'll just, or do you have to refresh? No. You don't have to refresh the page. Yeah. Okay. It's it's as cool as React. So auto magically, uh, not to get into the Skate detail this. behind the scenes, mm -hmm. it will uh, make the change on the page without refreshing. As soon as I you click Nick. save. Your name is Nikki, isn't it? Yeah. Can you spell? What's your name again? Oh, Jesus. Oh, no, <laughs> failed to compile. Well, you got a slash in there. Yeah, I was trying to escape this. I'm just, oh, I also didn't close the, <laughs> Duh. I didn't close the quote. All right, let's see it. Oh, there it is. That's really new shit. Okay, but it's actually not. That's the thing. This is where co-hosts. No, I'm her sidekick. He gets confused easily. I'm her sidekick. Easily confused. So uh, that's as simple as it is, really, honestly. Yep. Uh, there, there's some more in-depth things we can do. There's uh, the concept of dependency injection. Uh, Just like .NET, if you're familiar. Yeah, we'll we'll go into that. We'll take a look at a. Uh, we built a. That's service. pretty cool that you can do that in uh, JavaScript framework dependency injection. Yeah, it's super cool. I love it. I might have to actually take a look at Angular. Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. All right, so let's show me the mythical misfits front end that that you built. Yeah, we actually don't have it yet. Oh really? Yeah, because we didn't pull it down. Oh, that's right. So I I, I made a folder. I'm I'm methodical with my folders on my. And let me guess, it's perfectly named. Mythical perfectly. Misfits no. Twitch Episode 1. No. So here's my, uh, I'll What's the full name? Print the working directory here. Uh, Twitch Shows. I got my Twitch Nikki. Shows folder, and I put the AM Nikki show here, right? I like it. I still don't know why they gave me front billing, AM. I think it's alphabetical. <laughs> you want to check? It is alphabetical. It's definitely not for skill set. Let's put it that way. Let's oh, that is any, uh, so false. Any, any questions? He's full of crap. All right. We're doing that. Clone that. Yeah. Oh, let's see if there's any questions. Um, nothing. Okay. No great. questions. Cool. That's fine. Uh, what questions do you guys have so far? Yeah. What any? can we answer? We'll probably set aside some time at the end too to answer like five questions, right? Two. We can we can do that as well. Two. He just went it from five to two. I guess it's two. <laughs> uh, five. Five. Um, all right. So continuing on, just to give a short little recap, what we're doing here. We're starting to create an Angular app as our front end for users to interact with our e-commerce store to adopt Mythical Misfits. And he briefly uh, showed off the Angular CLI for if you're if you are building this for the very first time, even though ours is already built. Right. If you were just starting up, you could um, do ng new and then give it a template name. Nope, not a template Wait, name. What just was a project it? name. Just a project name. Yeah. And it would There's only create one template. a new project in a folder, the name that you indicated. That's right. And uh, then you could spin it up using ng-serve. You're already a pro. You're already a pro. I got it. I got all the commands. That's great. So this is the actual GitHub repo here. Um, I don't know. So you want to go to our branch. You probably want to put this uh, this link in the chat. Actually, not this link, because we're going to move to a different link yeah. in a moment. So earlier, there sh we, sh uh, we posted the GitHub link for our .NET branch in the chat. Um, but if you're just tuning in, we will do so again. OK, great, cool. Um, but this is the main repo. And it actually, if we just scroll on past, I'm trying not to scroll, give everybody seasickness. Um, we've got Python and .NET. And whoa, more coming soon. As I mentioned before, if you're just tuning in, uh, we have other languages coming, like Go and Java. Yeah, but we're doing .NET. So if we just were to click on that, I already have it open. So I'll just switch tabs here. This is the .NET branch. This right? is it. This is our this is our guy. Cool. So you can actually just check out this branch if you want to. Yep. Um, which I may have to Google the command to do. It's git git checkout. I remember it now. Actually, it's git checkout dash dash single branch. Or single branch. And then you have to do something like give it the branch name, I believe. .NET. And then you give it the repo name, like the main repo, I believe. So the link. Not this link, this that, one here. Yeah, that link. Let's see if this works. And if it works, I'll be very proud of myself. Not a Git repo. Oh, no, because I know what to do. Go back. OK. Go back up to the top. Sure. Clone that uh, URL. Oh, no, that's the same URL. It's, it's, it's dot Git, though. 
Oh, okay. I, I don't think that's going to change it. No. We'll find out. We'll find out. Why not? I did this earlier. I just forgot what I was doing, and I'll just Google it. Because guess what? That's development. See? Oh, nope. It still yeah, doesn't think it's stuck that's yet. Okay. That's okay. I tried. Uh, git. Not a Git repository. Oh, I did check out, didn't I? Git. Clone. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Live, live TV here. I should have called that out. Uh, you, you Single were, branch. Yeah, I think I did it right. Uh, let's see. And then now, yeah. Nope. .NET does not exist. It's okay. It's okay. We can pivot. <laughs> let's just clone the entire thing, and I'll show you. This happens to the best of us. It's not usual that you check out a single branch. No, usually you clone the way. entire repo. Um, so we just did that. You instead. could say git checkout. Now you can. Now you can it's switch to the branch. Me. It's gonna bother me. Yeah. Clone. Okay. So do it. Single branch. What is it? Clone only, only one, one branch. branch. Yes, the Thank dash you, dash Stack single. Overflow. Yeah, you got it. I did. Oh. Dash oh. dash single dash branch. Oh, you have to say git clone. Dash b. Dash b. Dash b in the branch. No, I thought there was, was a dash close. b in I was there. I so close. Well, they also started the. They so said close. the URL differently. It's okay. Here's an alternative way, right? So we cloned down the whole repo. Now yep. we have Python too. Let's say let's say uh, somebody's like, I'm sick of this .NET thing. I just want to go look at Python, right? Now we have that too. Uh, but how we actually get access mm -hmm. now is we have to get check, check out, out .NET. Okay, right. Where there if you we were go. gonna do Python, it would be git checkout. So now when ILS, I've got all the modules, I've got all the specific stuff to uh, the .NET. Okay. Open range. it up in VS Code. Let's do it. VS Code. All right, cool. So we're working on module one today, correct? That's right. Cool. Uh, well, VS Code just doing me a solid here and <laughs> giving me a lot of Sending you all the notifications. Yeah, it's notifying me of everything. Please, all the things. So we got a nice little readme here, right? We oh, wait. They got a question. Oh, yeah, sure. PC Geek 86, spaces or tabs? I I'm oh, tabs. Oh, God. Tabs. I don't wholly war. You, you don't participate don't in that participate war? I don't participate in the holy wars. He's neutral. You can call him Switzerland. I, so oh, I want wait, my wait. editor to handle that. You don't want to handle that. No, you don't, don't want to make those kinds of decisions. I don't care. This whatever. Like, just my editor can do it. Tabs. I'm tabs. I don't mean my, my, my source editor. I mean like my publisher. Oh, my yeah. Editor. I got another question. Oh, okay. UE underscore X's, uh, XCS. Do you add Amplify Magic later? We, we will. Yes. We will. Uh, it's the, coming. The first way we deploy, actually, is with the CLI or PowerShell tools. Um, the second way, I'll show you a little, a little Amplify trick. Amplify Magic. I love Amplify. He does love, love Amplify. It's he so, talks about it every day. It's so cool. Wait, so every day. Not kidding. <laughs> we've got, we've got a, a readme here set up, right? Uh, and this will walk you through the basics, right? But uh, what? We want to look at the code. We do. I, I always want to see the code. All right. And we can run this project locally, too. Actually. We can. Um, but look, we have the same in this front end folder. We got the same. Let me guess the structure. command to run it locally is ng serve. Wow. <laughs> God. Uh, so we, we've, we've got the same folder structure, right? Everything's the same. You're really impressed, aren't you? Yeah. So, well, I, I made this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be that surprised. Uh, you made this? I made this. Yeah, I think you made it. Yeah. Whatever. We all made it. As one. We're all one. <laughs> um, so remember, we talked about HTML. This, this is a good point to bring up, too. Um, HTML is the markup language, which actually sh tells the browser what to show. Right? Yep. Uh, so Looks even like a tree. these single page applications, that's what SPA stands for. It's an episode title. That's. I, ref I referenced the title of the show now, right? Or You're the, overachiever, the overachiever. So SPA stands for single page application. It still has to have HTML. Let me actually close this so we can get a better look. Um, this is what we see when a single page application loads in the browser for the first time. Uh, this is the minimal HTML that gets yep. generated, right? Yep. And if we see this, this looks probably similar to React. Looks the same. All right. Um, there's a root element that you uh, bind to. That's right. That's exactly what this is, too. You, you tell it where your root of the application is going to start up and then start injecting stuff with JavaScript to start making a page. And by stuff, he means HTML and CSS. 
Yeah, like all that good stuff. All the stuff. All the good stuff. So if we go into our app folder here, I've, I've made a bunch of components, right? That's an Angular term. Component is the actual little pieces of UI that get created on the page. Mm -hmm. I've also created some models, because remember, strongly typed, right? If we look this at one of these. This is reminding me so much of .NET right look now. Look at this. Look, see? Hey. I feel like you're writing .NET like that. These are properties of the class. Mistakes. And then you list out the properties, and then you list out the types of the properties. That's right. Yeah. Cool. This so looks so similar. We, we got a service here, too. We can take a look at the service. It, uh, it does things like retrieve the profiles. Right now, guess what? We don't have a back-end service. We've got no back-end service. So guess what I did? What did you do? Ah, I hard-coded it all. <laughs> what a great idea. That's a good practice, right? Uh, mm, how do I tell you this nicely? I don't think so. OK. That wasn't a nice way to tell me. You could have been nicer about it. I'll work on that for next time. OK. Just constructive feedback to you. OK. Got it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, now so that we, we have this Angular it. app. Right. And this is, this is the service that, in turn, we go, let's look at our, uh, we've got this grid component, right? Just look at this real quick. Um, let me close this. Right? Look. This is how we're going to retrieve. We use that service that I created. Kay. To retrieve all the profile data. The hard-coded data. Yeah, that's, well, well, let's not worry about that so much. Oh, OK, right, right, right. Uh, and then we go and paint it into the uh, HTML, right? So look, yep. this is how we get our little our grid of. Looks beautiful. Well, you want to see it? Yeah, I do actually want right. to see it. Let's run it. I'm going to open the terminal, right? And I you're going to type ng serve. Well, not quite yet. I have to navigate. OK, you got to get into the directory. I'm in the front end now. Yep. Right? Cool. Now. So now I say ng serve. Yep. Just gonna so run. So if you weren't there before, uh -oh. ng serve. I actually have to do npm i install, right? Because I have a bunch of node modules. So every time you fork a repo that has node modules on it and they're not installed locally on your machine, you'd have to run npm install so that they uh, download. This and gives me all the packages, right? All the packages that are all that, the he, that he needs for this app. Yeah. Cool, cool. There it Using is. Using a, a file called package.json. Now I can say ng serve. Now he can serve up the Angular app. If you missed that command before, it's how you serve an Angular app up. Hey, guess what? I'm already using a port. 4200. Oh, you got to shut it down. <laughs> All right, cool. I could have just given it a different port number. But, but it likes 4200. Well, no. I, you see, use dash dash port to, to specify, specify a different, different port. port. Got it. But we didn't need that other server running. No. And I would have forgotten about it if I didn't shut it down. Yep. So let's go back. I did that yesterday. This is, it already refreshed for me. Wow. Yeah. There's our site. Yeah, look, look, this is the data. We can actually go, like. So just what, what version of Angular did you build that in? Uh, six, the six. latest. Six. The latest. So now we have it, let's, uh, let's deploy it. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're running short on time, aren't we? I just did want to show one thing real quick. Remember Evangeline? We, 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 say 56. She, she, she was lying about her age. OK. She's older than me. There you go. It updated. Amazing. That's Beautiful. It. That's right. awesome. Cool. All right. So. OK. So I got, we have this great front end Angular app running. And now let's get to the, uh, the AWS stuff. Yeah. How do I get this? On S3 hosted in a static website. How do I make it so other people website? can go? Like, this is running on my computer. Yeah. No, you can't I, come hit this. I, I need to be able to hit this from my machine. Maybe you do. That's debatable. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. I'm cool enough. All right, fine. OK. I'm convinced. So we're going to use a service called S3 that we mentioned already. What is S3? Simple storage service. Right. It's, uh, it's exactly what the name says. You can store. It's object storage. It stores bytes of data. Bytes That's of it. data. It can actually store Any zero of bytes file. of data, too. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. You can send up a file or an object with that zero, bytes. zero bytes of data. And it will save it. Yeah. For what purpose you need to do that? Not really sure. But yeah. how do you know that? OK, you know what? Maybe I did it. I'm not going to ask questions. Maybe I did it. I I'm not going to ask questions. Tell us what that script does. So look, we'll, we'll look at both. right? I, I wrote a deployment script right? in Bash and in PowerShell. right? So I can run it with my choice of tool. Um, right. So one's using the AWS CLI, one's using the AWS tools for PowerShell, which there are cool. links all in the repo here to go learn more about those tools if you'd like. Uh, so all that I'm doing is I create a an S3 bucket. Bucket. Right? That's, that's 
the, the unit there that's used in S3 to so, hold the data. Right. So um, there's like AWS S3 MB right. make bucket. I actually did a little intelligence here. Oh, you did quote smart unquote things. intelligence. Um, I I took the project name Mythical Misfits. Yeah. I added a dash front end, and then I went and called out and got my AWS account number. Oh, so you could make the most uh, unique bucket name. Well, you have to. All buckets have to be globally uniquely named. That's correct. All right. So let's look. That at was a smart way to do it. Step one: we use npm to run a build, and we build for production. Step two: we make that bucket. If it doesn't exist, we just skip that step. Move next. Then we set S3 to serve a static website. Right. Uh, there's you a can do this that. in the console too. Um, if you're not a, right. if you're not interested in using the CLI or the PowerShell tools, um, it's under uh, what is it? Not permissions. It's a tab in your S in your S3 bucket. If you create a bucket, you can go into settings and say that you'd like to make this a static website bucket. Yeah, definitely. And you have to give it an index.html, which he's done here in the command. Yep. So next, I remove any existing files in there because Angular will generate file names for you that don't always correlate to the, the same build. So Got it. you may have older builds left in there. So I just wipe it all out. Cool. Um, and then I just copy my HTML, my JavaScript package, my CP, CSS copy package. Copy, paste. And that's it. Um, and once you run that, you've got a website. Should we run it? Let's do it. OK. We can look at the PS, uh, the PowerShell if anyone's interested in that, too. Or you can look on, a, on your own. So I'm going to CD out of this directory here. I'm going to CD into my deploy front end scripts. And I'm going to uh, deploy my front end. That's it. Is it going to spit out the public URL when it finishes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if it doesn't error? Well, it, it blew up. For sure. <laughs> no, it didn't. It's good. Uh, you might get some errors. It's OK. So most of the errors are handled. Most. Um, it's actually complaining because I didn't put an environment.prod uh, file here, right? But if we just go look, oh, yeah, it didn't like that. I have to go change uh, and add that prod version, right? So let's Environments? Do that. Yeah, the environment's how you supply. Uh, your uh, configuration. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to, at this point, we don't have anything to add in here, but we will later. Spoilers. Spoilers. So I'm just going to copy it. Uh, let me uh, actually close the terminal for a moment. Let's try this again, shall we? Production true. Oh, yeah. Hey, look at you. Look at you. I need you just looking over my shoulder all the time. Pair programming. Yeah. I got you. I got you. It's live. You can tell it's live, right? They would have cut this part out. <laughs> Let's try it they again. might have just cut like the last 10 minutes out. They probably would have cut me out of the show, actually. They Valid. Said, nah. Valid. We don't know about this guy. We're not sure. So now we're actually building. Now, now it's not freaking out as much. Yeah. Which is a good sign. I feel good about this. So then once it spits out the URL, we just hit the URL, and that's it. It's hosted that's for right. the public. So the like make bucket failed. That's mine. expected because, oh, look, upload, upload, upload. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Yeah, beautiful. Now, ah, there it is. Oh, okay. It's beautiful. Oof. Nice. Good Thanks. work. Um, now, somebody in the chat, what, do you remember the name? Said uh, UE underscore X, X's, XCS. X. X, yeah, well, OK. That's Said a, they wanted to see this in Amplify. That's a cool call out, by the way. I Again, props. Props for Amplify. I love Amplify. Let's take a look really quick. I really quick, wasn't kidding. He talks about we'll, it every day. Uh, we'll kind of wrap up. If we type in the command line, Amplify, I've got it installed. There's instructions on how to install it. Oh, look, there's the. Uh, we actually have um, Amplify will do this for us and actually publish and do all the things that I just read in that script. Really? For us, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, A pre-written script, who would thought? Yeah, yeah. So all you have to do is add hosting. OK. And then run publish. That's it. So That's so cool. Go to the Amplify uh, website. So let, let's type out the command, but just don't click Enter. No, I think uh, we leave that as a something to figure something out. Something to figure out. Because we'll, uh, we'll see more of Amplify and later modules, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So let's talk about what we did today. Let's talk about what we're going to do next time. 
and let's guess each other's lie. Oh, I, I thought you we forgot were, about that, yeah, didn't you? About it. Oh, I come did. on, it's the best part. Even though I won, I already won. <sighs> okay, so what did we do today? We uh, we showed how to get started with Angular if it's your first time getting started with Angular through the Angular CLI um, to basically use one of their templates out of the box. We showed our Angular app um, that Am built for Mythical <laughs> Misfits for uh, this uh, tutorial. And then he deployed it to S3 as a static website. And now yeah. what he's showing you he actually hit that in URL. the browser is that URL, which you can hit too from your browser. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, we, we forgot. We also cloned the branch. Yeah, we figured out how to clone the branch. We had some fun, fun with Git for a hot minute. Whoops. <laughs> it, Whoops. Was, it was a little more uh, kind of weird Git command. Yeah. I, I'd forgotten. Um, so. What didn't we do, actually? We still have all that hard-coded data, right? Right. And we don't have a back-end service that this is connecting to yet. Not yet. Next week. Next week. We're going to do that next week? Next week. Am I That's my here? code. You are going to be here. Are you going to be here? I'm definitely going to be here. OK, cool. It's my code. We'll both be here. We will both be here. OK, not here, though. Right now, we're in Chicago, actually. That's right. Next week, we will be live from the studio. In Seattle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, where we live. Where we live. OK, cool. Um, so so let's uh, let's let's guess the lie. Yeah, yeah. Remind me of your lies. Remind me of your lies. Because they're all lies. They're I all lies. Yeah, I know they are. Okay, so I said I'm a shoe artist. Shoe artist. I used to manage celebrity money. Celebrity money. And I've waited in line for every single iPhone launch since 2007. That's a lie. God. That's a lie. Because I know you ordered your newest iPhone. You're right. I waited in line for the first five launches though. And then you sent. And then Your I worked newest the next iPhone three. to the wrong address. Yes, yep. that is so true. I told you that story. Yeah, you Dang told me it! That story. I didn't remember telling you that story. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Okay. So let me see if I can guess yours. Okay. Okay. So you yours was mine? you went to college with a famous wrestler. Not uh, just any famous wrestler. The Undertaker. Okay. Don't know who that is. Um, Come on. Your second one was. What was it? Second one was Owen. I can I can impersonate Owen okay. Wilson. Okay, right. And then the third one was I broke my arm when I was a kid. Okay, so that one's a lie. It. I feel like you only lied about it for like a day, not two days. It was my leg. I oh, broke my leg. I got the lie. You got the lie. We both won. Dang. Wow. Oh, yeah, Owen. Yeah, there you go. Wow. What are you talking about? That's good. <laughs> now I'm gonna make you do that all the time. Wow. Sounds, sounds great, yeah. Well, okay. Uh, That's great. Yeah, I, I broke my leg and I lied about it for two two days. How in the world did you get a like what? <laughs> Just did you walk around like oh, well, everything's fine. <laughs> that was like four. That is amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. All right, so when can people tune in next? What do they have to do? Same time next week. The exact same time, right? Wednesday, Wednesday 10 a.m. Don't miss it. 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Pacific Standard Time. That's 12 p.m. Central Standard Time for those of you in Chicago that are tuning in. That's right. 1 p.m. 1 p.m. All the times. Let's just list them all. Let's go through every time zone. <laughs> Uh, great. So they can tune in next week. What are we going to talk about next week? Next week, we are getting into that back end. So we are going to, uh, I'm going to show you my, my .NET application that I built for this back end. We're going to remove his hard coded code. Yikes. And we are going to deploy my .NET back end to Fargate, which is our managed container service. Oh, we're so getting into containers. We're going to containerize my .NET app. It'll be a .NET core application. And then we are going to deploy it to Fargate. Well, you want to check this, the, the, the chat one more time before we sign Yeah. On? What questions do you guys have for us? Yeah, we said we'd do <coughs> two. Two questions if there are Ma That's max. Let's do a limit on that. Yeah, because we've we got we to gotta get on out. Yep. We've got a time limit here. We do. <laughs> I have things to do, so. Oh, you d I don't. <laughs> oh, OK. You, all you, have, you have no life. Yeah. I, have, uh, I don't right. see any questions. Well, we want to thank everybody for joining yep, us. Yep, thank for you sure. guys for joining us. Um, and we hope that you join us next week, too. If you didn't get a chance to ask your question, we'll be back next week. That's right. You can also reach out to us on Twitter. Yep, Twitter. My handle is Nikki underscore 23, and this Mine's is something too long. Long. A M S X B G. Yeah, that's good. Those are all my initials. I collect He has names. the longest name in the history of names. It's my collection. That's a side note. Yeah. Well, I've been Alan Michael, and I continue to be him as well. Uh, <laughs> 
AM for short. You are? I'm Nikki. Thanks for Thanks, joining guys. us. Thanks, guys. See you next week.